Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how you can roll squares. Basically, I'll show you how to roll any shape with the right conditions. So I bought this shape online after seeing a video of it rolling, and I thought I have to have that. When I got it and actually saw it, I thought there's no way this can actually roll. But suddenly I gave it a slight push and this is what happened. There's also a different one, a hexagon shape that you can also get to roll. It's so weird, it doesn't look like these should be rolling, but they are. So why would an object like this roll? Well, it turns out that it's not that hard to roll things that aren't spheres. You just have to provide the right conditions. For example, let's take this Lego. If I try to roll this Lego, I can't. It may take a few tumbles, but it's definitely not rolling. But if I put it on a different surface, then it rolls pretty easily. In fact, you could roll lots of things down the surface that aren't spherical, but why? So to understand why these non-spherical things can roll, first you have to understand that in order for something to roll down a ramp, there has to be some friction. If there's no friction, then the ball won't start rolling. For example, if I had this ball on a ramp and there were no friction, it would just slide down like this. It wouldn't start rolling. But what happens in real life when there is friction is it rolls down the ramp and starts rolling. And what the ball is doing when it's rolling is the point that's in contact with the ground has no relative velocity to the surface. So basically any point that's touching the ground is completely stopped relative to the surface. So that means that the linear velocity of the ball is equal to the rotational velocity times the radius of this sphere. That's just another way of saying that the point that's in contact with the ground has to be completely stopped if it's rolling and not slipping. So this is always the case in real life. For example, if I just throw the ball across the ground that's only slightly rotating, then the velocity is greater than the rotational velocity times the radius, so the point in contact with the ground is slipping across the ground. So friction causes the velocity of the ball to slow down and the rotation of the ball to speed up until the point in contact with the ground is the same velocity as the ball. And in the case where I throw a fast spinning ball at the ground, when it hits the ground, the rotational velocity times the radius is greater than the velocity of the ball, so the friction on the ground will cause the ball to actually increase in velocity or speed up and slow down its rotation. So I'm barely throwing the ball, I'm basically just dropping it, but because it's spinning, the ball speeds up. Now this is pretty obvious this should happen. But in these examples with the ball, the time that it took to make the velocity equal the rotational velocity times the radius is dependent on the friction of the surface in the ball. So a bowling ball in a bowling lane is spinning very fast, but it only slightly changes its velocity or direction by the time it gets to the end of the lane because the friction is so low in the bowling lane. Now the same thing applies with the Lego rolling. If it's going to roll, then the friction at the point of rotation needs to be greater than the driving force. So if I have low friction, like this, then the block just slides. But if I have high friction, then it's easy to make it roll when you push it. But since the Lego is non-spherical, it drops a certain distance before the other edge hits. So you have some rebound effects. Basically, it turns like that, hits, and bounces up. But if you get it rolling fast enough, then the distance it drops before another edge hits is so small that there's low rebound effects and the Lego doesn't bounce, but it just rolls smoothly. So the faster you rotate it, the less it drops in between each e edge hitting the ground. So what this basically means is that with a lot of friction and rotational speed, you can roll basically any shape pretty smoothly. So for these shapes, they basically just extended the square surfaces so that there's actually not a flat edge, so the rolling is more smooth than a normal square would be. And so there's less rebound effects, and you don't lose your rolling energy due to the rebound. So there's almost an elliptical pattern around it as opposed to a flat square pattern like the Lego. So it has to roll right in the center to get that smooth roll. Same with the hexagon, and the hexagon's actually a little bit harder to roll, because it has to 
get right in that center and the area is a little bit less. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And check out theactionlab.com for the Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.